We've been doing this series on one another. Love one another, care for one another, get to know one another. It was last week, right? Did you get to know anybody this week? Did you practice what Andy preached? No? But okay, we're working on it, right? Today, um, I mean, I was praying about what to do. I have this list of one another verses. I'm saying, what, God, what verse am I supposed to share this week? And I, I was stuck on admonish one another. Admonish one another. And I'm like, okay. I have preached on this many, many years ago. I thought, you know, what is it for this group right now? Why is it so important? that we do this for a storm. And that's what I prayed about all week. I said, God, what is my, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. Like last night, even though I have all my notes ready, like I was up till like four o'clock this morning because I wanted to say something about, for you today, about admonishing. What does it really mean in scripture? So if you will, would, would you turn with me to Colossians uh, chapter two, and we're gonna be in chapter three, but I wanna just read one verse out of chapter two first. I kind of give a little history about the book of Colossians. Paul wrote it, um, and he was, well, let's read these verses first. Let me find you that. Sure. Hallelujah. Colossians. Chapter 2, oh, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 1, and we're going to go in verse um, 27. And I'll read a couple verses there, and we'll jump over to chapter to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery, which is in Christ in you, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Say it with me. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. 28. We proclaim him as admonishing and teaching one and everyone with all wisdom, so that they may present everyone perfect in Christ. Say perfect in Christ. Perfect in Christ. All right. That's you guys. It's going to be perfect in Christ. Amen? Verse 12 of chapter 3. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, those are those that are in Christ, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. Forgive whatever grievances you may have with, against each other. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and, and as and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God, verse 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for your word. God, I pray that you use the words that I speak to uh, uh, compel us to be more like Christ. Father, I thank you for that today. I give you glory and honor. Use this moment, Father. Use this time, God, to make us like Jesus. Yes. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> admonish one another. So, we'll see in a second here that this is talking about those teaching. But also I think we can admonish one another or encourage one another or teach one another in daily life also. So what does the word admonish mean? So as a synonym, it means to rebuke. I'm thinking, Pastor Appreciation Day, Asia Day, I'm going to rebuke you so you can be more like Jesus. I'm thinking, that's not going to really work too well, is it? I'm going to counsel you, but I'm going to caution you. That's what the word admonish means. Also, as an antonym, it means uh, uh, applaud, com uh, um, command, praise, and exalt. So the word admonish can mean a few different things how it's, be, how it's being used, but it's actually kind of like almost an encouraging warning to follow Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. It's kind of like, not only am I going to teach you, but it says teaching and admonish. So it's kind of like a warning 
that, hey, you're about to do something you shouldn't do, or maybe you're going somewhere you're not supposed to go, or maybe we allow, and this is what I'll teach you, this is what is used here, we're allowing some things in the church as a whole that looks more like the world than it looks like what Jesus intended it to be. Since we had prayed that Jesus is the head of the church, ahead of my life, I remember uh, uh, one time standing up here and telling the board that I'm no longer going to be pastoring this church. I'm relinquishing my command of this church. It's not mine any longer. And I said, Jesus is now in charge of this church. Amen? And that's great because I'm not, I'm not responsible for anything that happens then, right? Jesus is going to take care of everything and he's going to make everything happen. So we look at this for a second. We look, let's look at verse 16 and 17. Um, in verse uh, chapter 3. And we'll start with just, we'll kind of just teach on these two verses. I think it's probably the best thing to do. Because I'll be here all day if not. All right? Because I, I, like, um, I like teaching the Word of God. I love um, God's Word. I love sharing with you how we are supposed to be perfect in Christ. We're supposed to be unified in Christ. And we're supposed to walk like Christ. Amen? And we look at, um, and just stay right there for a second. If you look at... The, uh, the book of Colossians, and you go through a little bit, it talks, Paul writes about how we're not supposed to be uh, anywhere conform to human regulations anymore in the church. So we're not to, we don't have to go obey the law in the sense of all the, the, the feasts and all the stuff that, you know, uh, the church would put on you to try to make you to be like Jesus. And we go on and go on and see it tells just to, to don't be conformed to the things of the world. Like, don't think like the world. Amen. Don't think like the world. When you, when, it, when you have to deal with serving, don't look to get anything back. That's what Jesus said, right? When you give, as you give unto the Lord, don't expect anything in return. It's different, right? Because when we're in the world, we say, we're going to give you and we're going to charge a little bit of interest. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> that way, that's what the world says. I'm going to get, if I'm going to help you, I'm going to get something back for it. You know, even in today's standard, even Madison's a really cool city, because in this city, you can volunteer to a thousand things, and you get a certificate for it, you can hang it on your wall, but we're in Christ, we just do stuff because we love Jesus. We want to see the other person come to know the fullness of Christ, love in his life. God loved me through my junk, and I know God's going to love somebody else through their stuff, amen? I think it's amazing when I see God transform people and say, wow, God does love me, God, God does care. You're, you're, why, are you, why are you so kind to me? Why do you... Why are you happy? Why? Why? Because I think differently than what you're thinking. I'm not about myself. Come on, saints. I'm not perfect. I'm not about myself because I do like things, <laughs> right? But you know, I, everything that and you could attest to it. Well, some of you can. Everything I have is not mine. So I give it as to the Lord, right? So I don't think like the world does. I want to think differently. That's what Paul warns here a little bit. And he says, and then there's rules for holy living. He goes on, if you read the rest of chapter 3, how we're supposed to live. Honoring God in everything we do, everything we say, every, all our actions, everything we're sacrificing for the others, right? So they'll come to know Jesus fully as our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Walk with me, talk with me. Let me show you. I don't know. I remember Dion, when he came, he was looking for a job, right? He just got out of college, got married. Uh, Gracie was on the way, and so, like, I got to have a job. I mean, got my degree now, and I need a job, right? And I, and I know we did all that stuff, but you know what I was doing with Deanna? I was just getting to know Deanna. You know, where he's from, and his, his, his brother, and his, his mom, and, and, and just his life, and how he met Ashley, and, you know, and all that. You know, because it's, it's, he has a story, and I want to know his story. And as I begin to counsel with them and share with them, but yeah, we were just counseling them. We were like, yeah, like you said, we were doing stuff wrong. I had stuff that had to be done, you know? Come on along with me. It's like just every part of just doing life and life together. It's so amazing. I love missional communities. I love what we're doing. We come together and we're loving on each other. We're hearing each other's stories. We're praying for one another. Um, I love Linda's praying today because I was thinking like she's praying. It's like, yeah, we're praying like that on, as we yeah, end our meetings on Wednesday night. We, we pray for one another. And uh, this last Wednesday, we have a gentleman that's part of our group. His name is Bobby. Uh, he's not here today, but he's like, man, that was so awesome that you guys actually pray for each other before you leave. Like, it's like so important. But it's, yeah, because we have needs, and God knows what those needs are. And so we need to take care of each other. But anyway, we need our monitor. So the, the, the whole thing about this monitoring each other is good. And I, I want to just shout because, you know, it's in the Marine Corps, so I like want to shout something. Like, you know, like, stop sitting and serve God, right? I just want to yell it out real loud sometimes. But that's what this is all about. This is about... 
serving and being like Jesus. Like, do you ever hear in this church right here, and Pastor Andrew, myself, Tina, and Rachel White, we always say this, Jesus, 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 or gospel, 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 or missional community, mission, right? You hear it all the time, right? Because that's what it's all about. It's like you being like Jesus, uh, this church family to be like Jesus, so we can be like Jesus to the world, right? So it's like Jesus, you hear us talking about all the time. We, we, in our, our group, we're talking, and, and I like, I'm learning how to do this better as a pastor. But some will have a problem, and I want to answer it right away. <laughs> or Linda or Tina, we want to give them the answer right away. Because we know the word, we've been in the word, we've been doing this for a while, so we want to give the word. But a lot of times they have to work it out themselves, right? So somebody may be new in the Lord, or maybe new to our group, that really don't understand. We say, what does the Bible say about helping Tamila, right? So how, do, how, does, how does the word of God say help Tamila? And so we're learning to, to gospel or use the word of God to help out each other instead of just saying, well, girl, if you did this, you saved some money, you know, you worked more hours or whatever. Like, they don't want to hear that. We want to hear that God's on our side. And we do it all the time. We wanna, we wanna, we're admonishing, we're, we're encouraging you, we're strengthening you and saying that all your answers are in Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The gospel is the center of what this, God, this epistle is about, is that Jesus can do everything for you. Amen? Jesus is the only, Jesus is the only, only one who can have faith in for salvation. Amen? Our hope is only in Jesus. Jesus delivers, heals, and sets us free. Come on, remember this. We hear it all the time. Jesus can forgive your sin. Amen. Amen. By the blood that was shed on the cross and all the whippings, his body was sacrificed, that all our sins would be given, can be forgiven because of his blood. Thank God, all the junk in my life, yeah. all the worries, all the sins, all the disappointments, all the things in my life, I can give them over to Jesus. And he said, listen, son, I'm going to take care of this for you. Amen? Matter of fact, the very penalty that I deserve for my sin, Jesus took it away. Amen? Right. And that's awesome, right? Jesus is the, um, is the, all things were created by Jesus, we read. Even in the beginning of time, Jesus helped form what we see today as the world, the heaven and earth. Amen? Not only were, uh, Jesus is the only one, Jesus is the only one that can unify the body of Christ. Matter of fact, he prayed that in John 17. He prayed that we would all be one. Every believer, every follower after Jesus, matter of fact, your homework for this week is read John 17. That we would be one. Be like Jesus, right? And not just this body here, but every believer that we meet across the whole world, that we're all one body. That's right. right? Well, I don't believe this way, or I don't believe that. Shut up. It doesn't matter. You're being like the enemy. The enemy is creeping in to the church and causing division, and that's what admonishing does. Say, listen, we're not going to listen to the devil. We're not going to listen to the enemy. We're not going to listen to division. We're going to listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what the Amantia does. It warns us that we need to be careful about what, how the enemy sneaks in. Well, did you know Pastor Bob would say hi to me this morning? <laughs> he didn't even shake my hand. <laughs> or they believe this, or they believe that. It's, you know something? We believe, most Christians across the world believe this, that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. That's a, good, that's a good start. We also believe that he died on the cross for our sins, for the whole sins of the world, right? We also believe that he rose from the dead. And I also, we also believe that he's coming back. Amen. So if you can agree with those four things, I think we're pretty good. Got a good start, right? Yeah. Amen. Forget the rest of it. Not really. Not really, but I'm just saying, that's a great start. Mm -hmm. Amen? Jesus is the, is the mystery of salvation. In Jesus, we have wisdom and knowledge. You lack wisdom and knowledge is my favorite verse. Pray, and God will give it to you whatever you need. Amen. So I'm back there doing the counting stuff, and I had to log on to the state website to pay the taxes for payroll, and I, don't, I hate that stuff. <laughs> but guess what? It worked the last three months in a row, so I'm, I'm three in a row right now. So I've got a phone call, so that's pretty good, right? God, I need to do this to save some money. How do you fix this in this church, or how do you do this? You know, every time you need something, you just pray. How many of you guys are computer programmers here? <laughs> uh, how, many, how many get into like, man, what is the next step? What is the code? What is the, the key to get this thing working? I don't know. You know, I mean, I have all my wisdom. I call my buddies. And then I just stop for a second. Jesus, will you help me? You know what he does? He can give you the answer right there. Isn't it amazing? I love when he does that. So my God's alive. 
He wants to know about your life. He knows you intimately anyway. He knows all about you because when you were formed in your mommy's womb, he knew you. He knew all your problems that you're going through. He knows everything. And so, like, we just need to be humble enough to submit to him and all things. Christ is all in all. So in at Capital City Church, we'll say gospeling. We'll say Jesus. We'll say Jesus. We'll say Jesus again. You need to know Jesus. You need to fall in love with Jesus. The church as a whole just needs to fall in love with who saved them. Yeah. I want to encourage you. Get away from the things of the world and, and conform to the image of Christ. We're made in that image anyway. That's such an amazing thing to me. I struggle with stuff just like everybody else does, but I don't have to because in God created me in His image so I can have victory over all the situations in my life. They'll come. There'll be challenges. There'll be, there'll be uh, untruths that come into church. There'll be things that are not true in your life, things that you don't believe about yourself. But you know what? you got a default to say, I know Jesus is the answer Amen. for what I'm going through right now. And He'll walk through me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. He'll be right there with you no matter what you're going Thick and thin, Victories and trials, he'll be right there with you. Can you say amen? amen? I need Jesus. How many need Jesus today? Hallelujah. Amen. Man, that church, that's all they do is talk about Jesus. But that's all I can give you. I can point you to him. That's what I want you to do is go and follow Jesus. I say, read, all these, I read your Bible every day. Pray every day. Listen to Christian music or listen to Christian programming. What, you know, it's not about... The discipline of doing those things is right here. I want Him. Yeah. I want Him. And then it causes me to do those other things, right? right. Like this week, I was, I was uh, well, like, you know, Senior Center is using the building. So we got Madison West Senior Center. I love it because they're in here doing their exercise classes with their little dumbbells. And <laughs> they're, you know, some older ladies that need, you know, guys that need some help. So they're doing a little, they can't go downstairs, so they do it right there in the hallway in the nursery. And then uh, the other class, the bigger class, goes downstairs, and they do more, more aerobic type of stuff. And then there's an art class. I love the art class. They have watercolors. And it's so cute because, you know, they all have their big bag of their watercolors and their, their uh, what do you call them? The, the canvas, yeah, the canvas and stuff. And they got, you know, half-finished picture, and they go down there, and they're, they're doing it. Well, I was here, and I was studying, so I just thought, I need some time with Jesus, you know? It's like... I crawl, I come to the sanctuary, no lights on, no music, I, I was laying on the floor over there, but I had my uh, cell phone music going, just a little low, and uh, all I hear is, um, like, five minutes into it, right, I'm just, like, just kind of getting cleaned off, you know, and thanking Jesus for making me hate like him, and I hear, Bob, it's like that, uh, you know, the, the uh, movie with the little uh, seagulls, my, my, right? So I was like, Bob, Bob, she could hear the music, she didn't know where it's coming from. So Bob, she's walking through my office, Bob, Bob, and she came through here, and then she came in here. I'm like, okay, God, I'll have to get up. <laughs> she wanted me to turn on the heat downstairs. But anyway, she was like, don't you know I'm spending time with Jesus? I need Jesus right now, you know? But I did, I was, it was just a great time. I love being with Jesus. Paul was telling the church to take all things of the world and cast them out of the church. That's what this whole is about. And conform to be like Jesus. Our church, our lives, should be Jesus should be the center of all things. Amen. How do you do that, right? What? Do, well, how do we make everything like Jesus? How do we do that? How do we? How do we? Um, you know, part of that um, is encouraging us to, of course, come on Sunday mornings so we can celebrate things and, and encourage each other in the Word. But I guess part of that is just being in the Word yourself, right? Like, I don't know, I gave David, a, David asked me for a, a reading plan, so I gave him a reading plan so he could go through the whole Bible, right? We have the one I like, it's you, every day of the week, there's a different part of the Bible to read. So you go from Old Testament to Psalms and Proverbs and New Testament and Epistles. And it's kind of really, so it gives a seven-day thing, it's about two or three chapters a day, and that's it. And by the end of the year, you know, 365 days, you can read the whole Bible. There's some up there if you want to take one with you. It's just good being the Word, to hear God's voice and hear, and let Him speak to you. And I don't know if you take notes when you read. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I just sit and read. You know, I just like just reading because I need to hear God's voice. Yes. Amen. And I know that you need the same thing. So I, I want to encourage you to, to uh, I want to encourage you to uh, find some time through your busy schedule to say, I'm carving up this time to, so I can be with Him. Yes. So I can listen to the Holy Spirit speak to us. Because the Holy Spirit 
is going to tell us the same thing that Jesus is going to tell us and the same thing the Father is. All three of them are one. And the Spirit of God is that still small voice that speaks to you and say, Hey, Linda, I love you. Amen? The Spirit of God is the one that opens and illuminates the Word of God. Monishing means this. It's like giving a warning. It, uh, the admonishing is like, please, don't turn away from Jesus. Please, serve him with all your heart, soul, mind, body. In fact, I don't know if I even got half me in there yet. I said, I know, but I want to encourage you. Come on, seek him, and he will help you. Amen? Don't put your job first. See, Jesus is Lord of the whole earth. Jesus is Lord of my life. If that's true, if Jesus really is the Lord of our lives, then everything is submitted to his lordship. I give all my life to him. I give all my, my talents, my job. Matter of fact, not even your relationships. I can't put my wife before Jesus. That was a big one for me because I really love my wife. And being a new Christian at a young age, I was like, wait a second. Like we, and we had nothing. So it was like me and Tina... We had $400 a month, and we lived on a mil next to a military base. I mean, we had nothing. Thank God we had a furnished apartment for $125 a month. That was awesome. I bought silverware from uh, Rose's Department Store in Jacksonville, North Carolina. It was a... <laughs> anyway, we, but we trusted Jesus. And I'm thinking, as I learned to, you know, as I was going to church, and I was learning about being a Christian, I had to put God before my wife. It's like I had to put God before my children. I had to put God before my career. I had to put God before my wealth. I had to put God before everything. And when I did, everything seemed to work out so amazingly. Like, we had nothing but we are the happiest people in the world. <laughs> Why? Because we knew our salvation. We had hope in succeeding Jesus again. We had, that we were free from the guilt of our sin. Praise God. It was amazing time and it still is and it gets sweeter and sweeter and amazing every day everything has to be subject to Jesus in our lives if we want to be like him right. and receive so we say we're, as a pastor we say man we want to start two more missional communities and we want the people to just you know, multiply and, and reach the city for Jesus and we, we can't do that we can't say Linda go do one more thing or Kevin do one more thing go do more no what it is is I will do things because I'm in love with Jesus. I want to do something, right? I want to give up my wealth. I want to spend extra time sharing Jesus with my coworkers. I want to spend extra time praying over my wife and children because I love Jesus. Amen. Not because Pastor said, this is the thing you have to do. Because I hate lists. How many like list people are here? Any list people here? You got list, list people? You like lists? Any? Yeah, I hate lists. I think they're too binding. You know, I'm like, I'm like, you know, how do you get anything done? I don't know. I get up, I go in the garage, I fix a bunch of stuff, and then I go sit back on the couch. You know, we <laughs> bought a light yesterday, and, you know, I needed to get done, so we put the light up. You know, it was really cool. It took a few minutes, but I didn't have a list to do it. I just, you know, I'm too spontaneous, I guess. That's probably drives my son crazy, but that's all right. That's who I am. I'm not going to change, right? But I want to, I submit everything to the Lord. Like, anyway, praise the Lord. What happens if we don't, what happens if we don't put Jesus at the center of our life? What happens when we don't do it? We get selfish. One of the first things we do is we're selfish. It's me, mine, 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 me, me, me. What about me? Me, 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 me. I went to see Tim Hawkins on Friday night, so I got a thing out of comic thing going on in me. But I'm just laughing at myself right now. Uh, but yeah, me. It's all about me. Me, me. What I want, what I want to do, and that's and that's I get that I get that way just on occasion. What happens is we make, <laughs> what, thank you, Linda, for being honest, amen, but yeah, you know, what happens is we begin to look more and more like the world than we look like Jesus. We start thinking, it's a problem, so when we start, when we don't put Jesus center of our life and everything that we do, then we start to conform to look like the world and think like the world. Our hope becomes what we can do with our skills and talents and our wealth than it does with what we're supposed to do for Jesus. So it's all about me. Take, it's like survival. We need to, like, this whole world's going to end and we're going to be with Jesus if we really love him and follow him, right? So what, well, you know, I like to have, I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
you, I said, let's take it a piece of paper out right now and write all the stuff that you put before Jesus. All right? Go ahead, do it. Get a piece of paper, write out all the things that you put before Jesus. You need a piece of paper, get, pass out those bullets. There's a big blank spot in the back. I was thinking about doing this last night about 3 o'clock in the morning. I did, I did put it in my notes, but I thought I would do it anyway. I got five more minutes, right, Andy? Five more minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pass out those bulletins. I want you to write everything on that piece of paper that you put before Jesus. Now, you don't have to turn these in, so this is between you and God, okay? Don't turn them in. Well, well, maybe we should turn them in so I can read them to you. <laughs> no, I won't do that. I'm admonishing you, encouraging you. Write the things down so you can say, okay, God, I want to work on this right in my life right now. God, I am putting this before you. You know what the hard thing was when I had a brand new baby? I had a brand new baby, then nothing. My whole world was all about that little baby. I had five of them, so it was awesome. And five grandchildren, so I'm really proud. Right? There's nothing more important or more precious than that little baby. All life. I remember, uh, I remember when Andy was born, yeah? Tell that story. Precious little. I sit on the bed with my babies like this, and I just look at them. I couldn't believe that God gave me a baby, right? This is amazing. But that baby is second to Jesus. Yeah. That love that I have for that baby, or for my wife, or for my four things, has to be, Jesus has to be first in all those things. Hallelujah. Go ahead, are you writing them down? Yeah. Uh, look up when you're done. If you've got a long list, Jason, that's okay. Just go ahead and keep writing it down. That's all right. <laughs> you got it on this phone. <laughs> One thing. You know, that, did I show that video to you guys about the pastor coming up and sit, you know, he came up, he was like, a, you know, had a robe on, right? And he, the church, yeah, did I do that? It was just our group. Do you ever see that? And he, he's talking, he says, oh, you guys need to stop it! You remember that video? Did you see it? No, it was just our group, I guess. But anyway, it was a funny video about the church, and he's calling out people that have stuff in their life. He said, he points this one guy in the church, he goes, and, and this guy, you're the worst. And it was, anyway, funny. Uh, stop it. You're making me look bad before God. That's what he said. <laughs> but it's not me. I don't, you know, I'm just here to encourage you, right? I want to teach you how to be followers of Jesus. I want you to be, I want to admonish you to don't be like the world, but be transformed to be like Jesus. I want you to encourage you to keep walking after him and following him. You know, don't follow me because I, I might crash. <laughs> Crash and burn, and you fall on Bob, and oh my God, you know. But I do some good things, so you can follow some things. I like, to, I like to pray, right? I like to worship, right? Follow this. You know, I love to study the Word, so get, follow those things. Yes, follow after Jesus. Amen? Let's look at this, this these last two verses here. You got your list? Just hang on to them, all right? We'll deal with that in a little bit. Let me roll this thing down to the run right, runway here and, and close this thing up. All right, well, look at verse 15. It says, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Where is it going to rule? In your heart. Wouldn't it be nice to have peace in your heart so no matter what you're going through, Jesus wants you to, to have peace over that. Since as members of one body, that means we have to, we're one body. Man, we, we're here to help each other, encourage each other, right? Be there for each other. Amen? Pat each other on the back. Say, uh-uh-uh. You know, once in a while, come on, follow Jesus. Keep on the right track. That's what we need to do. It says, as it says, one man body, you were called to, look at this word, it says right here. I won't preach on too long, but peace. We're called to peace. How many watch the news? How many watch what's going on in the world today? Crazy stuff, right? But crazy stuff's been going on for centuries. Yes. It's no different. We got to stand up and be the light in the problem, right? We got to say, come here, you need to Jesus. I don't care what... Uh, denomination, no, I say denomination, whatever denomination, whatever slave, it doesn't matter. It's one God, one Lord, one Savior overall. And we're, as believers, are going to point people to peace. People lose a loved one. You want to be there to offer peace and comfort, right? People are successful. You want to rejoice with them. When one part of the body hurts, we all hurt. When one party, a part of the body, 1 Corinthians 12 tells us, we all rejoice. We want to be there for each other, amen? So that brings peace, because I know my brothers and sisters have my back, right? And be thankful. How ever say, be thankful. Be thankful. Oh, say it louder than that. Be thankful. Be thankful. All right, rip one more time. One, two, three. Be, be thankful. thankful. All right. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and teach you, admonishing one another with all wisdom. Man, so you're teaching and we are admonishing. So we're teaching you the word of God. We're teaching you to follow Jesus. We're saying yes. 
Jesus did die for your sins. Yes, he empowers you by the Holy Spirit to be his witnesses boldly in the world today. Amen? We're going to encourage you to do that one another with all wisdom. Hey, I don't know how to deal with the situation right now, but I know the one who does. Amen. We're going to come together. We're going to pray together. We're going to believe God for your situation. I don't care how grave it may be. I don't care what it is. We believe that God can take care of every situation in the world because he said he would. He said all you have to do is ask. Matter of fact, Jesus said, if you ask in my name, the Father will do what you ask. How powerful is that? The name of Jesus is powerful. Amen? And that's who we rely on. Amen? And look at this. It says, and, uh, uh, with all wisdom, so, and it says, and I love this part because it, it includes me in the worship team. Right? I love this part, right? Because they won't give me a mic, but I can still sing. Amen? I love to worship God. I love just spending time in the sanctuary with the music blasting and praising God, right? Uh, I love just spending time in my chair, worshiping God. I love spending time in late in the evening, late at night, Dion, just yeah. worshiping God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. My mind would not shut off last night. I'm thinking about all the stuff, the missions giving, the, uh, the bills that need to be paid, the people that need Jesus, the Chi Alpha meeting we're going to have, the Thanksgiving, all these things are rushing through my mind. I, I was thinking about the people that I led to Jesus years ago. Where are they, God, right now? What, God, are they still serving you, God? I don't know. I, my mind was, but you know, there's a piece about that. I, I was just like, God, you can do it. So anyway, I started singing. <laughs> Glad Tina was singing, sleeping. But um, anyway, you know, worship. It says so. It says with songs, songs, sing songs. Yeah. Right. So these songs that David wrote, that Andy, we read every the beginning of service. Why do we read those big service? We put Jesus first. Mm -hmm. We want our focus. And you know, when we come into the church on Sunday morning, we want our focus to be Jesus. We want our focus to, to honor the Father. Amen. We want the Holy Spirit to move on our hearts as we unify together and worship. And then they say hymns. How many, the, these hymns are probably not, these hymns are written, you know, this was written before the hymnal book. <laughs> right? So it was like, well, hymns, I mean, like, do you get, who, are, who, who grew, grew up uh, using the, the red hymnal book? No way. You got, okay, you know what I'm talking about, right? And then who about the green one? That was the other one, you know, like that was the, yeah. you, know, you remember the green one, right? So it was like, those were like holy hymns. Everybody has to sing hymns. But this is not what the hymn song. This just talk about a song from your heart. Like Andy said at the end there, we said, well, let's just sing songs from my heart. Just sing songs. I don't need, I just make up stuff. His, his words are new every morning. Yeah, I'm good at that. Tina's like, what song are you? I love my son Chris, but son Chris and Tina, they're, they're musicians. So if I'm in the car and I'm singing a song, I like to sing three songs at the same time. We're all mixed up together. <laughs> words from this song is with this beat, I'm off, you know, I'm just, I don't care. That's right. I'm worshiping Jesus. Right. My favorite song, Andy, was what? The Old Rugged Cross. The Old Rugged Cross, right? <laughs> and I get, I, once in a while during dinner, I bring, bring out the old hymn and we sing The Old Rugged Cross. I love that song. I'm thinking about Jesus dying in that, that old tree for us and resurrecting, and it's just, a, I don't know, it's one of those songs that just a love in my heart, it's in my spirit, and it just comes out. But it, sometimes I mix up all the words with some new songs now. It doesn't matter. I just love worship. That's what God wants our heart of worship. Jesus, yes. you're first. Yes. I adore you, Lord. Yes. I adore you. Amen. And then spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. Verse 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through Him. Thank you, Father, that I can worship. Thank you, Father, that I can serve. Thank you, Father, that you do all things. Amen. You got that list? Yeah. Say, Jesus, I put this before you. Please forgive me. Amen. Let's let's not put anything before our God. Let me let me encourage you this morning. Let me encourage you. Say no to those things. Whatever. Everybody just close their eyes right where we're at right now. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, all this is before you. Yes. I surrender it all to you, Lord God. Father, let nothing be before you in my life. Yeah. Let all things, all my thoughts, all my heart, all my actions, all my deeds, Lord, all my life, 
be submitted to your Lordship. Hallelujah. Do you believe it today? Do you believe it? God wants to be Lord over all of your life this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, I surrender all, all to him. <laughs> Lord, it's all, I am yours and no one else is Lord. I am yours, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to put Jesus first in everything in my life. Holy Spirit, help me to understand what it means to put Jesus as Lord of all things in my life. Lord, I pray that you are Lord over every thought. Let my heart be filled with peace and love. Joy, God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus, for all you're doing. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Let me just pray a blessing over you. Hallelujah. Does anybody have victory over anything yet this morning? Can you say yes? yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of that stuff. Come on. Is anybody? Yes. Can you raise your hands up high. Yes, I am getting rid of stuff out of my life so Jesus can be the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord over my life. You are Lord over my thoughts. You are Lord over all things, God. I want to encourage you to seek after Him with all of who you are. Oh, to even myself. I'm praying for myself this morning. I'm saying, yes, all seek after you, Lord God, with all of who I am. So every thought can be held captive to you, Lord God. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. And thank you, Jesus, for paying the penalty of that for those sins, though I don't have to. Thank you, Jesus. And now I surrender all my... I just think about praying this out loud for you guys. I, I surrender all my problems... Come on, all, everybody has problems right now. So everybody's dealing with stuff that you can't handle. Would you just hand it over to Jesus right where you're at? Would you say, Jesus, here it is? Hallelujah. I'm free from that. Jesus, here it is. Thank you, Jesus, for taking that problem, for taking this situation in my life. Jesus, thank you for taking the weight of this problem off my life and off my family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we, can, we, can we shout? Can we do a little Jericho shouting around the, the walls right now? Jesus. Jesus. Just say it. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free from the guilt of my sin. Thank you for taking my problems. Thank you for loving me and giving me peace over my situation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am free. I am made whole. Hallelujah. Jesus, our Father in heaven is telling you this morning that he loves you. He loves you as his children. He wants to draw you close to him. So we can tell you, dear child, you are mine. You are his this morning. You are his. Hallelujah. Father, we ask right now, I ask in the name of Jesus that you bring peace over this congregation. Let their hearts and minds be filled with your love. Father, give them peace as they go this week. Let them bring light to their families, let it be light to their workplace, let it be light to the world. Father, I thank you for that. In Jesus' precious name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. We greet each other. Hug and hug. Tell them how much you love each other. Tell them you're going to be there for each other. You're going to pray for each other this week. Hallelujah. We give you praise.